Welcome everybody. Uh, yes. <laughs> we were this close to sending an officer out to find you. And just gabbled us in, so welcome. Welcome everybody. Uh, we'll get started with the Pledge of Allegiance. Erica, I think it's your turn actually to lead us. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Um, with the board's permission, I'd like to uh, change the agenda up just a little bit tonight and um, ask uh, for your permission to move the public session, which is number two, down to, I guess, behind 4A, right after the clock proclamation. We have a couple ceremonial matters that I'd like to do first. 6A. Um, for those of you who yeah, hear public six. comment, it will, we won't be much longer. We'll, we'll get there pretty quick. Is that okay with everybody? Sure. Sure. I'll make a motion to move public session uh, below section 6A. In the second. Second. Any other questions or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is uh, the approval of our minutes from April 4th. I move that they be approved. Second. Okay, any questions or concerns or changes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, the minutes are approved. Next item on our agenda is appointments. Um, I know we have one appointment. Yes. Yep, uh, Mark, will you make uh, I would like to move that uh, Kelly Lawton uh, be appointed to the Conservation Commission. Uh, for the balance of the four-year term, uh, uh, previously held by David Payton. All right. I'll second. Any questions or concerns? Kelly, I think, is actually coming a little bit later. So we can, I can introduce you after the meeting. Right. If there are no questions and concerns, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Thank you. Uh, the next item is old business, and the first item under old business is IBAC. You want me to go? Sure, you can, if you'd like. Um, so I don't think there's anything new to report on um, our work on IBAC because we actually haven't met since our last meeting here um, in the Board of Selectmen, but I'll just repeat where we are. Um, next week, um, the 27th, at 8 a.m., we're going to be holding... Um, another meeting of the committee. Um, our hope is to um, get uh, the final quote unquote information um, on the potential list of projects so it's all in one place so that the list is ready uh, um, to distribute to the public. Um, and then uh, we will be holding a public workshop uh, for those who are interested in the, that list and interested in providing us feedback on not just the projects on the list, but others that, that you think we may have missed, although that would be tough. The list is it's pretty long. Um, that meeting will be May 23rd at 6 p.m. Um, in these chambers. Anybody have any questions about that? All right. And then um, on the strategic plan, um, I guess only a very quick update. Um, we did finally get a chance to meet with the Parks and Recs, Park and Rec Board. I apologize again that that took so long. It was mostly my schedule that kept um, messing it up. So I asked Erica to send um, a reminder to the various different chairs of the committees that our original deadline was May 1st. Um, we've got a few responses back, but um, we'll send out a reminder and see where we are as we get closer to May 1st. Did I miss anything on that? Nope. All right. Um, all right, we're up to new business, and the first item under new business is to present actually a couple of proclamations um, to our retired now, not retiring, retired town clerk, Karen Hazen. So Karen, will you come up to the podium? I'm gonna, 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's what, can you hear me, Mark? Is the mic picking us up? Can you hear me? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read the proclamation from us, our town manager and the board of selectmen. We're going to present it with you. We're going to take a quick break, and will you take some pictures, even if this with my phone? Sure. And then Representative Anderson is here, and he has a proclamation from our General Assembly. And he's going to do that, and then we're going to take another quick break and take some pictures of him. Okay. And then we're going to make you stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Her favorite activity. <laughs> All right, so I'm not real good at reading stuff, but I'm going to try. So this is a proclamation that reads, Whereas the office of the town clerk is a time-honored and essential part of local government throughout the world, being one of the oldest professions in public service. And whereas the office of the municipal town clerk provides the professional link between the local governing bodies and agencies of government at all levels and citizens. And whereas Karen Hazen was appointed as the assistant town clerk on July 19, 1999, before receiving a promotion to the town clerk position on September 24, 2007. Whereas an active member, I'm sorry, whereas being an active member of the Connecticut Town Clerks Association, the International Institute of Municipal Clerks, and the New England Association of City and Town Clerks, she maintained a high level of professionalism associated with the status of town clerks. And whereas Karen Hazen has diligently served in her role as town clerk with the town of Granby for nearly 15 years, and now therefore be it resolved that the Granby town manager and board of selectmen do hereby commend the dedicated service provided to the town residents, the board of selectmen and all town departments and recognize the congratulatory occasion of the retirement of Town Clerk Karen Hazen. And then we're supposed to seal it, but we don't have anybody left in the office. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to seal your own. <laughs> yeah, maybe you brought home the stamp. <laughs> so, so before I ask you to rise and, and join me in thanking, she hates these things. <laughs> and we're really, really going to miss her. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you guys are coming down for pictures. I will, uh, um, the Hazen family was actually the first family we met when we moved to town. And they're the reason we stayed. Right? I'm telling you the truth, right? You know yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I'm, I can't be in charge of things like organizing the pictures. Betsy, what do you think? Over here in front of the. the yeah. In front of the. Yeah. We'll just go around. John. Come on, Fred. You're the tallest guy. Don't go anywhere. Representative Anderson, do you need me to do anything? Just get out of the way. I'm not in position. Get out of the way. All right. Come back down if you need us. My privilege to present this proclamation from the General Assembly. So as a Grand Bay resident, I've been your customer for only half your tenure since I lived here, but very well run operation and it's my privilege to be part of this town with a well run town clerk office. So read the pro proclamation. State of Connecticut General Assembly official citation introduced by Representative Mark Anderson, 62nd District, Senator John Kissel, 7th District, Senator Kevin Whitcoast, 8th District. Be it thereby known to all that, the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to Karen Hazen in recognition of your more than 20 years of service to the town of Granby, culminating in 15 years as the town clerk. You maintain and conduct yourself with the highest levels of professionalism. Your dedicated and diligent service are deeply appreciated. We wish you the best in your retirement and future endeavors. 
The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success given this 18th day of April 2022 at the State Capitol, Hartford, Connecticut. Signed Martin Looney, President Pro Tem, Matt Ritter, Speaker of the House, Denise Merrill, Secretary of the State. Congratulations. Photos. I don't you want to put that one down for the photo and hold another one. Does Mr. Hazen want to be in the photo? Sure. Oh. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. Apparently not. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'm presenting or how do you want to do it? Can you fold it Thank you very much. Thank you, Kara. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want a few minutes to speak? <laughs> yep. Enjoy you your retirement, time. Karen. You do thank you. Thank you, Karen. Bob, thank you for all you do, too, for sharing Karen with us. Forever. I just drove. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so I told you we'd get to the public session pretty quick, and I think that's where we are. Before we take public session, I want to um, just take a minute or two and, and um, kind of give a little bit of background and, and talk a little bit about what we're trying to accomplish and why with the, the public session. And I'll take some responsibility, I guess, for maybe not I'm talking about this a little bit sooner, since I, I've um, <laughs> uh, been chairing since, I guess, uh, mid-November. And maybe it's something we should do periodically. But I, I have been getting some questions in the community about what are we doing and why and uh, how do the rules work and so forth. So maybe just a, just a reminder of what we're trying to accomplish. The, the single most important thing to know is we're, we are not, by any stretch of the imagination, trying to cut off public comment or trying to discourage people from sharing their thoughts and opinions. We want to hear. Um, those of you who were around when I ran for this office, you heard me talk about um, we can respect each other, we can listen to each other, we can learn from each other, and we don't always have to agree. And e even when the world around us is incapable of doing that, you know, we can do it in Granby. So we want to hear what you have to say. We welcome hearing what you think we're doing right and what you think we could do better. Um, but we do have to have certain rules um, to make it both useful for you um, and for us. Um, and the rules are designed, frankly, to achieve some balance between taking input and receiving uh, information from you and being able to conduct our meetings and get um, our work done. Um, so our rules actually come from a document. It's not a charter issue, really. The charter requires us to adopt a set of rules for this board. And we did. We did, I think, in our, our first or second meeting since we um, uh, took over. And uh, they, we didn't make significant changes to them, but the rules set forth, um, we will hold a, put on every agenda, a line that says public session, um, and we'll give uh, people the opportunity to speak. And it does uh, set a five minute time limit for each speaker. So let me, let me again walk you through what we're trying to do. So just for a couple of examples, um, the public session line as it, it exists on every one of our agendas. We don't have to do that by state law, but if we do it, we're constrained to follow with what straight state law tells us to do. So you may um, want to speak tonight, and your comments uh, hopefully will fall into one of two categories. One is you want to give us some information or ask a question about something that is not on our agenda. Just you, something you want us to bring to our attention to be considering or something you want to ask us questions about. We are constrained, severely constrained, in the conversation we can have with you about that because it's a public notice issue. It, um, it's because it doesn't appear on the agenda. Those folks who are following the agenda and, and watching because they have items that they are interested in wouldn't know we were having the conversation since it wasn't listed. So we will be very strict. I will, will do my very best. We want you to comment. If you have a question, or again, and then we'll use our judgment. You'll see us turn to Erica and say, will you look into that and, and answer that if it's something that can be answered or something that we need to address further. The other category is if there's something on tonight's agenda 
specifically that you want uh, to talk about. And we have a little bit more flexibility there. We, again, want your input. Um, and we set a, a, a five-minute time limit that I will try to adhere to. Um, again, there's a reason for that. Just everybody in this room has either tried to run a meeting or been in a meeting, or you're trying to achieve the same balance that we're trying to achieve. I, I give you a goofy, silly example. So, you know, if you're in your corporate um, office and you're holding a company-wide meeting and it's supposed to, the topic is supposed to be sales and how are you going to improve sales, and Fiorentino walks in and all he wants to do is talk about why can't we get Coke in the vending machine, you'd set some rules. You might want to hear from me about the Coke in the vending machine, but at some point you need to be able to get the business done. So um, that's why we have those rules. Um, neither of those are particularly well suited for real back and forth, um, where we're talking about stuff that's not on the agenda, just of general interest to people, or we need to be able to have a conversation back and forth. And that's why we have a third tool, which I think to the best of my knowledge we haven't used yet, but we are going to use soon. Um, our rules allow us to set up separate public workshops or public hearings. I forget exactly what the rules call them. Um, and that's where we have a specific subject, like the affordable housing uh, plan. We will be setting a public hearing where we will have back and forth, we will have a conversation, where we have a lot more flexibility in terms of taking people's input. We will still have a time limit to guide us because, you know, again, we have to try to manage it. But um, that's just one example. You already heard me talk about another example when we do the IBAC um, venting of the, the list of projects we're considering. So, um, so I guess my point is be patient with us, understand why we do what we do, do not be afraid to talk to us, um, but um, understand what, what we're trying to accomplish. There's one more thing which I will talk about in my r report, that I, an idea that I have that I haven't discussed with my colleagues yet, um, because I think it's reasonable for the citizens to say we want more back and forth with you and we don't want to be constrained about what are on the agenda. So I, I'm thinking about holding um, a town hall meeting or, or just a, a chat, a come and talk with whatever you want, no agenda. In fact, no town staff. Just Mark Fiorentino and any of those of you that want to come. Maybe we do them once a quarter. We just invite people to come and you tell us what's on your mind, what you want to talk about. So that's not on the agenda tonight, so we won't discuss the details of any of that, but we are trying to respond and we're trying to get to the point where people are comfortable that they're being heard and at the same time do it, getting our business done. So now that I have said all that, I will not repeat that. <laughs> um, any, anybody have any questions about that? So um, we will do public session. Uh, if you're here to speak um, specifically on the affordable housing plan, again, I will welcome your comments. Um, I will ask you to consider um, holding the bulk of them because the purpose of what I want to try to accomplish tonight is, with the exception of Mr. Newman, the rest of us um, have not had any opportunity to have the plan presented to us. So we, the committee is here, Abby is here. The goal tonight is just for them to present it to us, give us the meat and potatoes, why they did what they did, maybe answer a few basic questions, but frankly, unless you guys think otherwise, I don't want to get too much into detail of that either, because I think that should be part of the, the public um, discussion. So again, I'm, I, we're happy to welcome your comments. We are not taking any action tonight on the plan itself. The one action we might take um, after we've had some discussion is uh, scheduling the, the actual uh, public, at least the initial public workshop on the plan. Everybody okay with proceeding that way on the affordable housing plan? You okay, John? Yep. All right. We'll go inside and then to the computer. Okay. Folks. All right. So we will start with folks um, here in the room in public session that want to speak to us. So who wants to go first? Somebody has to, or we'll move on to the, to the um, virtual.
States. Thank you. Questions ready? Right? Yeah. All right, Glenn Ballard, 289 Granville Road. Um, I think the nicest thing that we could say about um, the committee and their process uh, so far is that you know they may be wonderful human beings and they may be, may be great at their day jobs, but for whatever reason. Um, they either didn't have access to or chose not to access the skills and tools in order to get the plan across the finish line the way that um, the way that the state's uh, template and you know sort of general practices around planning uh, prescribe and, and that you know we actually need for it to be a meaningful plan uh, to either drive further action by their committees or to be able to engage with the community at large. Uh, about what we're doing, and so I have, a, I have just a quick few um, exhibits for you here to that regard. Uh, the first one should look like this. It says AHPC committee timeline at the top, um, and all, the point of this one is just that they skipped a couple of key steps, right? You can see during their October 7th uh, meeting, one of the items on their agenda was to explore the use of a town survey or customer survey, and then following on the 27th October, it was to identify short and long-term goals. And both of those things are missing from the output, unfortunately. Um, and I think that um, alone is enough to cause you to want to um, write a letter to the state and say, you know what, um, we're working hard on this. We need a little bit more time to, to fill in these blanks. Um, and there would certainly be nothing unreasonable about taking that action. And then the other little graphics that are on here are from the state-supplied uh, template for doing this work. So. Um, there's a clear checklist here with some items that were missing, and there's a clear, you know, there's, there's examples to fill in where, you know, you have goals, actions, time frames, and, you know, we're just not, we're not to that level of detail yet in terms of our plan. <clears throat> uh, one of the things, the next page should look like this, double-sided. Again, it's from the, the state's template, and it's regarding communication strategy, and it's all the things you could possibly do to keep everybody in the loop and, and engage folks about this. Um, including in-person events there on page 13. If you scroll down to the first one, public information meetings, formal public meetings where information is shared in a presentation format and the public has an opportunity to ask questions. Unfortunately, the public hasn't had an opportunity to ask questions so far on this plan. They were denied on multiple occasions. Uh, once when the committee's consultant was um, around uh, making his presentation and again on the public session on March 24th. Um, and I think that's unfortunate. And again, I think on its face, that's enough to say, you know what, let's take a little bit of our time and give the public opportunity to ask questions. The last, the next page should look like this. It says plan summary. Um, so what I did was I summarized some of the key points from their uh, plan in a manner which I think should help people see uh, what's missing and, and which dots need to be connected. All right, and again, the key ones are there aren't any goals. And then, uh, so if we could supply some goals, we could we could have a conversation around do the recommendations in the plan line up with the goals? Do they actually have a shot at meeting any of the goals? And are the re recommendations consistent with the values and the vision uh, that were set forth in the plan and that are derived essentially from the plan of conservation and development? All right. And then the last page um, is an example of a survey that could be distributed widely to the public. Um, I spent about eight hours on this, including reviewing um, surveys and or survey results from four other small towns similar to us. And I spent a few hundred bucks to um, create a SurveyMonkey account. So this could be distributed electronically and, um, and through print media as well. So um, again, I think if you are, so my goal here was to give us a more robust set of customer feedback information prior to your public hearing, assuming you're going to have it and assuming that it's going to be a roundish the end of May, based on whatever time you decide to declare that and then the 35 day notice, right? All that kind of stuff. So, um, 
it doesn't sound like tonight you're willing to take the action of delaying, saying, yeah, we've decided, you know, based on, or we will decide after we've heard everything that the public has to say that, you know what, we really need some more time. So, um, in, in any case, um, this is here for your use, for our use. Um, and I would appreciate your consideration of that. And, and, and I have been and ha always will be uh, willing to help the committee and you all in whatever capacity that I can. Well, one more thing. So I have a, I have a question. About sure. Um, I know you emailed this to me. I didn't study it, but I did, I did get the email. Thank you. If, if I understood your email correctly, you, you, you're kind of willing to take as a volunteer, take responsibility for distributing the survey and Crunching the tabulating results. its results. Yes, sir. Um, my own personal belief is, and we'll, we can discuss at the end, um, you ought to do that. Um, if you think it sounds like it's obviously important to you and maybe some others, um, you already put all the infrastructure in place. It looks like you've already even designed a system. The only thing that we would need to talk about is just the timing. So. We, if we schedule the hearing um, for our second meeting in May, that's the 16th. So that's almost a month from now. Um, so it seems like you could get a fairly. Uh, people who have heard me talk from on the Board of Ed um, are going to recognize this statement. I, I have a prejudice against surveys. <laughs> um, I, I think, unless you have to be very careful on what you want the information for, how you're going to use it, how it's designed, and so forth. So. I'm always leery of spending a lot of time and energy developing surveys um, if, if we're not sure the information will be useful. However, in this case, my own personal opinion, if it's useful to you and useful for you to provide input to us when we have the public hearing, I, I would say do it. You don't need our permission to do it. Just do it. Um, all right. Anybody else have questions for Glenn? Or? Now, fair warning. Um, <laughs> you have to take responsibility for the survey. <laughs> I do. In, in terms of whether it's it's useful or not. Again, I, I'm not studying whether what the questions are or anything like that. Anybody else? My uh, concern would just be how valid the results are if it's able to be cash cleared, retaken by multiple or the same people. Yeah, I think Survey Monkey. You know, I haven't. Guards against I don't have too much experience with Survey Monkey, but it's pretty easy to kind of cheat. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, my thinking is I wouldn't do the survey, but it's Glenn's energy if that's what he wants to do. And I think when he presents the information, those will all be fair questions um, to delve into the data and if it's valuable to us or not. My concern, obviously, is that you would be making your decision then based on the 17 people that spoke at the public session on the 24th, and then whoever came to your public hearing, you know, it might be 30, 40 more people if we're lucky based on the track record here in town. And so if we can get several hundred responses that provide us some indication of whether people think the ideas in the plan are good or not, that you would, you would be willing to consider that at least. Well, I think you just heard from me. I'm willing to consider it. I think it's, if it's important to you, you ought to, and you're willing to do the work, you ought to do it and, and present that at the public hearing. Thank you very much. So, all right. Anybody else here in the room? You're Bob, right? Yeah. yeah. Publicly, everybody, I owe Bob an apology. I was supposed to call Bob last week. No, no, don't worry about it. You're, totally, you're busy, I'm busy, we'll get together. The week totally got away from me. Do you want to? Uh, I want to comment, but I'm going to take your suggestion and hold them off. All right. And when we meet again, uh, I'll uh, come forward with my opinion. All right. Thank you. Anybody else here in the room? Sorry, Bob, I don't have my glasses on, so I was guessing it was you. Oh. <laughs> All right, on Zoom. Does anybody want to address this on Zoom? Phone once. All right. Um, just a bit of um, introduction, I guess, before we ask who's going to who's going to start the presentation. Chris. Okay. Um, first I'll of all, down to join my committee. Oh, please do. So, those of you at home, I think we have, is that the entire committee here? Um, there are a couple of, there are more than half of us. Okay. Yeah. 
Most of the committee is here ready to make a presentation to us and answer at least some preliminary questions. Um, I, I want to take a, a moment on behalf of myself and I'm sure the entire board and thank you for your work and um, I'll tell you kind of a funny story. So when, when um, most of you know that I am a land use lawyer, I mean, that's what I did for a living for years. So when I first came to town and offered to volunteer and um, the person who was interested in helping me volunteer asked me my background and I told them and they got, oh, you'd be, you gotta get, we gotta get you on the Planning and Zoning Commission. You'd be a good fit for that given your background. And I said, uh, not only no, but hell no. I am not serving on the Planning Commission. That's the toughest job we have in this town. Um, it, is a, it is a very difficult job to deal with the planning and zoning issues, especially a complicated one like affordable housing. It's a very emotional subject. All land use decisions are, and um, especially when you overlay it with the complexity of the various different issues that are uh, related to affordable housing. And so I, I'm grateful for the work that you guys did, and I, I know how hard it is to try to balance um, the different things you're hearing and to try to reach consensus on these issues. It's, it's not an easy job. So um, thank you for your work. I will say only for myself, um, and uh, I have uh, talked to some people and told them this privately, that we're doing this process um, because the state law requires us to. But frankly, from my own uh, opinion, it's something we should be doing even if the state law didn't require us to do. These are the kind of issues we should be discussing. Uh, we're not going to agree on all of them. We're not going to achieve everything in this plan. Um, but the fact that we can sit down and talk about them together is, is um, that's in the best interest of Granby no matter where we end up. So I'm, I'm glad we're doing the work. Um, uh, frankly, generally, I like the, the, the format of the recommendations because they require us. They, they give us some areas of study that uh, we might want to consider forward. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, consider um, working on in more detail, which is, I think, what we have to do. And frankly, it's by definition what we have to do, okay? This board has no authority under our charter to make zoning regulations. We couldn't even if we wanted to. We have no authority to order the Planning and Zoning Commission to do anything. They're a separately elected board. Conversely, recommendations like considering um, tax abatements and those kind of things, the Planning and Zoning Commission has no authority to do. They couldn't do it without working with us. Utilizing town-owned land is another good example. They, we would have to work together. So uh, generally what I like about the, the plan is that it, it gives us a list of those kind of recommendations that we can start to prioritize and start to, to um, work on together. One last thing, and I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, Erica, I, I forgot to mention, in addition to the survey that you're doing, I, I have asked that we create a link uh, on our website right with the, the plan itself if we can, so that people can provide written public comments. And I encourage everyone to provide written comments. And it, so you don't have to email anybody. You don't have to figure out an email address. Just go on, you click on it, you provide your comment. It's a running list of comments, so we all have access. Everybody can see everybody's comments. We can all share uh, that information. It's a tool that if it works in this circumstance, I think we will use quite a bit. It's, a, it's another great way uh, to get uh, people's input. So combined with the hearings we're having and Survey Glenn has volunteered to do and that kind of information. So. When yep. can we have the link up? The link, it, it's simply affordable housing at granby ct.gov is the email address. And um, we will make sure that if it's not up there already, we will make it a link itself on the web page. I just have to double check, just I was not in the office last week, and I'll double check that that's been completed. So, once unless we, oh, yeah. I can get information now. No. no. We'll, we'll make sure that, you know, by tomorrow morning it's done if, it's, as, okay. if it hasn't been. Once we know that it's up and it's operating, I'll test it and throw something in there and says test. Once we know it's working, I'll, we'll get it out through our Facebook page and we'll share it out to other outlets yeah. so people have plenty of outlets. But it is um, our regular email address system at granby-ct.gov. It's just all one word, affordable housing. All right. 
I am finally going to shut up and let the folks who did the work come up here and tell us about the work you've done. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, Abby. Good evening. We're just waiting for them to put the PowerPoint up for you. Okay. is not the entire plan I, the plan was provided to you after our public after our public comment session these are just a few highlights and a few areas we wanted to highlight for you tonight as it's an introduction for you other than mr. Newman who was a very hard-working and loyal member of our committee. so this is just sort of the background the, the historical legislative background of how this committee came to have to be created, and the, these are the steps that we took. Uh, we were finally all appointed on September 7th. Um, the charge that we were given was to prepare an affordable housing plan pursuant to state requirements, present the plan to the board of selectmen for review. Um, we met first on, December 27th, on September 27th. We held a public comment uh, session on March 31st, and we finalized the plan and got it to you on April 7th. Uh, just to, in case there's a question as to why we decided not to do a public hearing rather and just do a public comment session, there were a couple of reasons for that. Uh, we don't see us as the body that takes final action on the plan because we're not that body in the statute. That's for first law for you to do, and then if there are other boards and commissions in the town that you asked to do work on the process, that was your process. The other reason was because of timing, we felt it was very important that if we were going to have a time for the public to come and comment, we felt it was really important to get it into the drummer. And the timelines were such that if we did a public hearing, we wouldn't have time to set it and publicize it on the drummer before we'd have to hold it. So those were the two reasons for that. Um, what is affordable housing? It's housing price for the people earning 80% or less of the median income spend no more than 30% on their housing. It's based on household size, um, and that's our data. So th those are the price points for us. Affordable monthly payment depends on household size and income, so this gives you some sense of the scale of that. If it assumed that the maximum number of bedrooms needed for a household is one less than the size of the household, then this is the following maximum rent. So you think if it's, it's two-person household, chances are that's partners, and so they would just need one. They would just need one bedroom, and it goes up from there. And so those are the affordable housing rents at each of those household sizes. Based on a house standard that a household can afford to spend about three times their annual gross income um, for a purchase, these are the price points that that calculates out to. Uh, what's, what are the different types of affordable housing? There's a incumbent unit, encumbered rather units. That's a unit that is guaranteed in some way to remain affordable for the life of the unit. So whether it's deed restricted, we'll talk a little bit about, more about that. Whether it's set aside by a developer, um, those are units that will always be affordable. As opposed to naturally occurring affordable housing, which at any moment in time might meet those definitions that we looked at, but could increase in price and cease to be affordable. No guarantee that it would stay affordable. We have 134 units, or 3.28% of our housing stock is considered affordable. And that's because, again, that natural occur naturally occurring affordable housing doesn't count towards that total. Um, this is the, we got the, the 2020 data from the Department of Housing. Um, only governmental and assisted housing users or those with deed restrictions are counted. That's the, that's the key point. Yeah, it does not take into account our natural curry affordable housing. I just want to point out too, so that number can change. So we do have some deed restricted units, um, so that's constant. However, the CHFA uh, USA mortgages come and go, as do the governmentally assisted housing units. So you will see some fluctuation. Data that was put out um, this year after we already started drafting the plan actually yeah. shows a slight reduction um, in the affordable housing count. Uh, I think that was, I forget which category it was, but there was a slight reduction for those reasons. Um, so here's our naturally occurring affordable housing. Again, doesn't count under the statute, but still it's certainly an issue to consider for us as we looked at affordable housing as a whole. 
about 900 units. Um, and then you see our, what our sales were over, the, over December 2020 to 2021. And why, as we talked about, why doesn't naturally occurring count? There's no guarantee that it'll remain affordable. So that's one of the reasons. And it's not necessarily occupied by households who meet the income threshold for affordable housing. And something with that too. So that is based on the appraised value um, that we have on the assessor's property card. When you look at the appraised value and the current market value and what's going on uh, with the housing market, we're actually seeing that that appraised value is somewhat lower than the appraisals coming in. Um, I see that for the housing rehab loan program when we get appraisals done on properties um, to qualify folks for loans, oftentimes the property card is much lower. So I've seen as much as $90,000 lower. So obviously using the assessor's information for the purpose of this plan, we, it might actually be a little bit less um, in terms of the amount of affordable, naturally occurring affordable housing, just due to how crazy the market is at the moment. Can I ask you guys a question about that? Sure. Um, again, I don't want to get into too much detail, so you can save, save it. But when, when you say it doesn't count, do you mean it doesn't count for the state standard? Exactly. It doesn't count when they when the, that ten percent number that's in the statute, naturally occurring affordable housing doesn't count towards that. So it doesn't mean we shouldn't think about it in terms of what kind of a community we are, but it but it does not count under um, 830J. It doesn't count towards that number. That ten, that ten percent threshold does does not count towards that. Because the state statute is a very narrowly defined. Okay. Yes, it is. It's a. It's. It is a very narrow definition, and of course, our committee and you and you can't really do anything about that. Did you hear that, Representative Anderson? We're constantly dealing with the message you guys send us. There are people trying to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is just sort of an outline of what's in our plan. We I, have you know, if I could just make one comment too. We went a little bit quickly through the slide, but I think it's important to note the um, what those income levels are. Oh, I mean, sure. You know, an income level of for a family of four is eighty three thousand um, dollars. Those are high income levels. These are not. You know what I mean? I, these are these are generally good salary. You know what I mean? I think there's some negative connotations that go along with affordable housing that it's extremely poor people. Or, or I'm not going to say it correctly, but um, these these dollars are you know affordable housing for one person is fifty eight thousand dollars. I mean, I probably have staff that are paid you know that could be using affordable housing. And we, talk, yeah. we actually talked about that as a committee, that there are probably a lot of people who work in, not just for the town, but in town, who don't come anywhere near to meeting these levels. So this is the, this is the floor that the statute sets. But yes, I think the image of affordable housing as somebody making, a, a single person making maybe you know, below the poverty line, that's not the way no. the statute defines it at all. So that's a really good point. Uh, so, so these are just some of the areas that we looked at. Uh, it's an outline of what's in the plan. I hope you have had an opportunity to review it. Um, but you'll see that we talk about, just as we did here, what's affordable housing. We look at our, democrat, our demographics, um, what our housing inventory is, um, our regulation, our zoning regulations, as well as um, the infrastructure that we have, um, economics and the financial feasibility objectives and recommendations and a conclusion. So that was sort of the general outline of what we provided to you. Um, we wanted to, we really saw our job as trying to give this board and other boards and commissions who have to act in this area uh, options that they could pursue, different ideas that they could pursue. It was never our thought that everything in the plan would be enacted by this, by this board, by, any, by other boards and commissions. We wanted to give uh, the folks in town that were going to have to ultimately take action on this choices, options, different ideas that they could look at. So our first thought was reduce the restrictions for accessory apartments. And interestingly, this is something that planning and zoning has been looking at separate and apart from the work of the Affordable, um, the affordable, plan, affording, affordable plan Committee. Um, and it's also something the legislature acted on um, this, this session in terms of looking at reducing the 
require the restrictions and regulations that apply to um, accessory apartments. Accessory apartments, for those who don't know what that is, uh, that's that's a, that's an apartment that's on a property that has a sort of a main dwelling unit, and this is an additional sort of side unit. Traditionally, they would be built for sometimes an aging relative or uh, for someone that's working with somebody in the house, a caregiver, something like that. But they've expanded quite a bit from that, and both the Planning and Zoning Commission and the legislature have been looking at expanding and making those easier to qualify for. And something I should point out, too, um, PNC is actually holding a public hearing on changes to the accessory apartment regulation at their meeting on April 26th. So that's something that they're actively pursuing, um, removing the special permit requirement for some of them um, and allowing attached apartments, so something that's in a basement or a small addition attached to the home, allowing those by right. So that's something they're taking up very soon. Are there any other of these recommendations that are going to be part of that hearing? Or is um, no, just the accessory apartments. Right, and that's really not pursuant to the affordable housing plan. That's some, basically because of the actions that the legislature took with regard to accessory apartments, planning and zoning had some choices to make, whether they wanted to simply allow those to take effect in Granby, whether they wanted to opt out of some of them, whether they wanted to restructure some of them. If we took no action, all of the state changes would simply apply automatically. So planning and zoning is looking at opting out and altering some of those. Um, we wanted to encourage the development of multifamily housing in town, um, looking at zones where multifamily might be allowed, where it's not allowed now, or it's not allowed as of right. I, and some of, I don't want to go through all of the recommendations because you've, see, you've seen them before you, but these are some of this, in the area of multifamily housing, this was something we talked about quite a bit because it did seem like That's something. That's the one where people get the most concerned. I bet you did talk about Yeah, we, 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 talk, we talked about, th this was one of the recommendations we talked about quite a bit. Um, and when we talk about density bonuses, too, because you'll see that later on, too, for single family homes, that refers to the number of units that can be built um, on a certain property. So oftentimes it's tied to the overall size of the property. So in the multifamily zone, the PDM zone, we allow eight units per developable acre. So considering an increase um, or a density bonus for affordable would allow, let's say, 10 units per acre or something like that. Um, we wanted to also encourage the, uh, the development of single family affordable housing because uh, it does, while we've had a lot of growth in apartment dwellings in recent years and some, in some other developments that got proposed and then didn't get built at least to date for whatever reason, it does seem like the preference in Granby for the most part is still for single family housing. Um, we wanted to promote the modest expansion of public infrastructure. One of the issues that we, t one of the very first issues we talked about, um, and it was news, I think, to a lot of the members of our committee, it wasn't to me because I'm on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, the area where sewer and public water are located in town is very limited. Um, much of the town does not have city water, does not have s sewer services. So that really does limit the density of development on those other parts of town. So that was, something we thought about looking at possibly modestly expanding where sewer and water are provided in town. Um, also possibly work with the um, transit, the transit authority to increase somewhat the, the uh, service of town to, of mass transit. Um, we wanted to talk about, we wanted to look at actively seeking partnerships with affordable housing developers. We did have, um, an expert in that area come and speak to us about what makes a community attractive for affordable housing, what are the economic realities and incentives that you'd have to look at in order to attract an affordable housing development to town. So we, we might want to look at that, a partnering with somebody like that to see where, whether there are specific areas in town where that might be appropriate. And that's a very quick summary of our work. I do want to say one thing before we take questions. Um, we did, I thought we had an excellent committee. Everybody on the committee, people came from different, you guys chose well, people with different areas of expertise. Um, people participated, people came to meetings prepared, people offered assistance based on their different areas of expertise. And I think um, 
although we didn't agree, I don't think every member of the commission, committee agreed with every recommendation in the draft, we did work very collaboratively, come to consensus, and that's what produced the draft you now have before you. Would you go back to the last slide just for a second? So, again, this is what I was talking about a little bit. Um, to me, generally, I, I like this format because there are some of these things that I think are going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible, for us to achieve in Granby, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't think about them and, and understand why they're impossible or extremely difficult and some that I think will, um, will be easier for us to accomplish. And so I, I, I personally, again, like the general format of giving us some mixing and matching and allowing us to prioritize different things, especially as we're working on a much larger set of goals and objectives for the town. So and, and I, I appreciate where you ended up on that. Oh, thank so, you. Um, anybody else from the committee want to add anything at all? I will. Thanks for the former board for putting me on the committee. Uh, I appreciate working with the committee. I think that uh, it was a great group to work with, and the support from the staff was absolutely fabulous. Um, I think that uh, the author of the report, Abby, did a great job of tying together all the different aspects that the different individual committee members brought to the plan. I think that's well said. I mean, we always. Every, every meeting, when we got to our next meeting, it was clear that Abby had processed what we were thinking and what we had said, where we, where we needed to go, the questions we still had, the questions we still needed answered. We really were able to accomplish a great deal in the, in the time period that we had. So I, I definitely echo Mark's comments. Sandy? Uh, I agree. I think that Abby really did take the bulk of the authoring of the plan. Uh, she has a greater expertise in that. And the team really did work well together. Um, everybody had some input. Um, and Abby was able to put it all together, honestly. You know, she just collected all of those ideas that we had at each meeting and would say, OK, should we do that? And Abby just, just kept adding and adapting to the draft all along the way. So it really kept us on schedule. Rose, before I go to you, or, or I just want to confirm that people on Zoom can actually hear you when you're talking. Anybody on Zoom? Okay, everybody can hear what's happening? We can hear. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Rose? I would just add to the comments that have already been made. Um, it was a pleasure working with you. You guys are acting like your work is done and that there's not going to be more stuff we assign you. But, <laughs> we are, we, we are, Let me warn you. <laughs> we are cognizant of the fact that our work may not be done. Monica? Yeah, and one of the things I wanted to uh, uh, emphasize, too, is when at our very first meeting, uh, this was a, a, a big undertaking for all of us. Um, and at the very first meeting, Abby came prepared with a series of plans from similar towns that gave us an idea of what other towns were doing uh, in formulating their plans. And that gave us a, a, a great opportunity to brainstorm um, and to just to take a look at what was working or potentially could work for other towns and what wouldn't work for Granby. So um, Abby did a great job of setting us in motion in an effective way. OK. Thank you. All right. Um, again, my. My instinct is, so I, I, I read the plan. First up, a public explanation to everybody. I'm not sure if this is the right decision or the wrong decision, but it's a decision I made and, and it's over. I intentionally ignored your process. I didn't come to the meetings on purpose. I haven't watched a single one of the tapes. Didn't read the plan until you uh, referred it to us because I wanted you guys to do your work unpressured or unprejudiced by our ultimate work. And, and I do understand and, and appreciate that it is primarily our responsibility to, to take, receive, and decide what to do with the, the public comment. So I'm grateful for that. Um, I do think we should, um, my point was, I read the plan. I had a bunch of questions that I emailed Abby. I know Kelly did as well. 
Um, I, um, those of you that, um, everybody else on the board, um, my, my instinct is the best thing to do is now that we've kind of seen it and had a little bit more time to digest it is to take a, some time and if you have specific questions, get them to them and that we would start our, whatever we hold the first public hearing was sort of that process, getting our question answered, but in a format where people were expecting that our questions to be asked, if that makes sense. So, but having said that, we're here tonight. So Sally, um, do you have anything? Still, still digesting, but yes, no, not at this time. Okay, Erica? I'm, I'm good right now. Really? Good for now, thank you. Good. Yeah, I sent some questions. I didn't add in the uh, housing trust fund, which I think sounds like a, a really interesting idea that I'd like to explore more probably. Yeah, so some towns are actually actively exploring that too. Um, so it's similar to what we have like the open space fund. So if a developer doesn't have um, quality land to dedicate for open space, they pay into a fund that the town then uses to purchase open space elsewhere. So this is a similar concept to that. So if there's a required number of affordable housing units and someone can't meet that or they don't want to meet it potentially, then they could donate into the housing trust fund, which is, could be used um, to develop affordable housing elsewhere in town. Um, most likely it would be a partnership between the town and an affordable housing developer. But obviously, yeah, it would require further study to figure out how that would work. <laughs> I think that if the town were to go down that road, I think it, the, each partnership of that nature would be unique. Be what, how large the project was, what the developer's vision was, and, and what the town felt, okay, if that's what you're building, here's how much we would be willing to contribute to it. Or we wouldn't, that's not what we want, we're not going to contribute anything to it. So I think that was just very, it was just an idea we wanted you to know was out there. We weren't necessarily advocating any particular form of it. We just thought that was, we were trying to give uh, this board in the first instance in the town and just an idea of the options that are out there. Because it is not going to, uh, it, it is not going to be easy to do to, to, to many of these things that we're, we're suggesting. Well, I know from experience that I may, I th as far as I know, I made this phrase up. You, you, we can't zone our way into affordability. Okay, we can we can create all the density we want, and I think the grand apartments are a perfect example. Density in and of itself does not equate to affordability. So it's a very, very complicated issue that even if we adopted this tonight and passed it on, we have years of work ahead of us to actually accomplish anything, I think. So, John. Got anything? We're going to save it for the first public hearing. Um, I All right. All right. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. So, Mark, you want to come back up and we can decide what to do next? Um, my own personal take is we, we ought to hold the initial public hearing um, on the 16th, get the process started. Um, the longer we take to get it started, the longer it'll take to finish. Um, I've already said publicly a number of times, so I'll say one more time, we'll take the time we need to get comfortable. Um, um, I don't think we have to commit anything further than tonight. Let, um, let's set the hearing, see how it goes, and then at the, after that hearing, make a decision from there, what we want to do next, right? Mm -hmm. If we're ready, we're ready. If we're not, we can tell the state we need extra time. But, so I think the motion was drafted to set the hearing for the 18th? 16th. The 16th, that, that would be our second meeting in May. Yes. My only question is, and I think I asked you this, that um, I really don't want to muck up that agenda with a bunch of other stuff, so is, is, is there anything we have to get done on that date? Um, I, I'm sure we can manage, since we do meet every other week, bas or, you know, basically twice a month, um, we could either do most of our business in the first meeting or in the first meeting in June. Okay. I don't want to get, yeah, oh, I see. Our you know what I mean? Business. We, we can have other business, you know, yeah. the bulk of our business on okay. um, the May 2 meeting, I think it is, and then the June 9, I think it is, or right. the first meeting in June. Okay. So the, which is the meeting that we would 
We would still have this on our second um, May meeting, May, which is May, May 16th. It would be devoted mainly to the affordable so yes. this is a little, it's a little right normal meeting. We would, it, it, you know, it would, we would keep that agenda very light okay. if, yeah. you know. We, I think, sorry, any actions would happen around the public hearing on that date, so that the time lot that we'd normally use for a board of selectmen meeting, we'd use for the public hearing, and then if there's any actions we need to take as the board of selectmen, we'll do it either before or after. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Bring your box lunches and plenty to drink. Um, so, all right. So, um, Kelly, you may, Fred, you want to make a motion to set the hearing on the 18th? I think the 16th. Yeah, he's saying the 18th. Just read the motion so I don't screw it up. I move to set a public hearing on the Town of Granby Affordable Housing Plan at 7 p.m. on May the 16th, 2022, in the Town Hall meeting. Second the motion. All right. Any other further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So again, a reminder to the public: we're going to get that link up. I strongly recommend. I think it'll it'll help us uh, flow through it. To, whether you want to come and speak in person or not, get us your written comments so that we have them as soon as you can. The better, the quicker you get them to us, the more effective we'll be able to review them and get ready to talk about them. All right, next item on the agenda is uh, consideration of budget amendment for the library enrichment grant. Um, this is a fun uh, agenda item in the sense that we have, um, it's always good news to receive grant funding, but we, the library went, off, went after a grant to enhance our summer reading program, and um, we're looking to really have some nice prizes and some other kind of marketing materials and such to get the kids reading this summer. The, the, the um, program this summer is called Read Beyond the Beaten Path. We did receive $1,998. I'm not sure why they couldn't give us two more for an even 2000 I, That's like my OCD right there. I was really hoping for $2,000. But that said, um, you know, we're going to have uh, that, that funding this summer to make a really nice um, program for our, our students this summer. As always, when we get these grants, they need to, they're not budgeted, they need to be uh, amended, the budget needs to be amended. We ask for that here tonight, and then we bring this to the Board of uh, Finance at their next meeting to find, uh, you know, increase that revenue account and grant expense line item. So again, um, I, we do continue to look for ways to enhance <clears throat> all our services to, to the residents of Granby and the library is always looking. So this is just a nice example of that. All right, we have a proposed motion in the backup. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve increases of miscellaneous revenue and grant expense line items in the general fund budget by $1,998 and forward this request to the Board of Finance to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, that motion carried. And we're under the town manager report. Um, I, I don't have a written report this this meeting for you. And we we skipped our regular um, budget operations report. There's there's not a lot of significant change there. And also, uh, honestly, Kimmy and I were uh, off last week for the break. So we will have that for you next month with a double, double report, if you will. Um, but no, I, we are working um, hard this week to make sure that we get the word out uh, to folks to vote on Monday. In a week, uh, week's time, we'll know um, how our budget went at, at the referendum. Uh, we are, have sent out postcards to everybody in town to remind them of that vote, and those should hit the the post, uh, your mailbox is um, Wednesday this week, no later than Thursday. So, uh, you know, besides what's been in the drummer, you know, everyone will get a personal note in the mail telling them to come vote. And, um, you know, that I think that's a great thing that Granby does to, to get that information out. We have signs around town as we usually do as well. So right now we've been focused on, on that and all of our spring projects and, and everything we're starting to really get 
getting gear with that as well. Thank you. Any, any questions? So I had a constituent ask me about the Hungry Road Bridge. So on our next meeting, will you give us a, or have Kirk just give us a quick update on where we're at? Sure. I mean, I, it's just in general, or was there a specific issue? No, just, no, no. Okay. Just where we're at, when, yeah. when do we think it'll be completed? I think we're almost there. That was a very, um, yeah, hungry. That that was the Hungary. 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 Yeah, Hungary. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, they're not native. So they're not. <laughs> Whoa. Potato, potato. I know. Yeah, I know. No, no, no. Worcester, or Worcester. That's what. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I think we're like ninety-nine percent there. I, I know it's looking very nice. So, I'll give you an update next time. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the first selectman report. I have two things very quickly. Um, one, I just wanted to give kudos to the robotics team again at the high school. So I, um, although because of COVID and other restrictions, um, attendance at the regionals was limited this weekend. So they made the New England regional finals again, um, which is incredible for our little team and our little town and the, the work that they do and the parents. Um, so I went over Saturday and watched a little bit, and then they sent me a live feed on Sunday. <laughs> now remember, both of my kids were in sports. I've seen a lot of high school competitions. It was one of the most exciting things I've ever seen. <laughs> These robots running around shooting. We, one of our matches went to a triple tiebreaker. <laughs> they, so congratulations. Huh? No, they, this particular competition, they had to shoot balls, shoot basketballs into a hoop, and then they had to run. They, robots don't run. Wow. Wheel themselves wow. there and <laughs> wow. climb up a ladder. Um, so the bottom line is we literally came one point in the last match that determined who got to go to the world. And it's like the World Series. It's really the United States Championship, they call it the World Series, in Houston. And we lost that match by a point. <laughs> one point. One more ball goes into the hoop. <laughs> And our kids are going on to Houston. So they, they just did a, a, a great job. Uh, so, And then, again, the only other thing I had is just tell me now if you don't like the town hall meeting idea. I think Scott tried to do it with his coffee for Cunley and, yes. and, and um, maybe just doing it in the evening so it'll give more people the opportunity. And um, we'll see if it's valuable. I'm willing to do it by myself. But I'm willing to have all you guys attend if you can. Maybe we'll set them up once a quarter, with, again, with no agenda. People come in, tell us what you want us to be thinking about. So, You did quite a few of those, yeah. The coffee with Conley, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hearing no objections, I'll, I'll work on setting uh, the first one. I don't know, we'll figure it out. We got a lot of, we got a lot of work to do right now. Huh? Yeah, that's a good idea, Sally. Yeah, that's yeah. not a bad idea. Yeah, I like that idea. I got, yeah. Yeah, I like I got two idea. of them. You got, got labs. <laughs> All right, we're going to start down on that end this time. John, give us a report. Oh, I didn't steal your thunder on the robotics team. No, you didn't. Um, today was the first day back from break. There were, I don't really know what they're called. There's these new, I don't know, they did a bunch of renovations where they took down a bunch of whiteboards and put in all these new touch screens. Um, again, I don't know what they're called. They put in all these new monitors, I guess, and a bunch of different classrooms and some air conditioning units which I'm excited about, even though I'll be leaving in a couple months. And um, AP testing starts in two and a half weeks for everybody taking an AP test, which is, I wouldn't call it exciting, but it is what it is. It is mm -hmm. Frightening. Yes, yeah. All right, how are the sports teams doing? Um, boys lacrosse is currently struggling. I don't know how many losses they have, but they're, they've yet to get a win. Um, girls softball was on hold because they didn't have enough players because some people were traveling and some were away during um, spring break. Um, I think girls lacrosse is the best team right now. I don't think they've lost. And boys baseball, I think they're, they might be a game or two over 500 or something like that. They might be like three and two or four and two. But I think it's going pretty well, besides Poison Cross, unfortunately. But I think they have a home game tomorrow at 4 o'clock, and hopefully they win that. All right. So, John, you only have a few more meetings with us. Um, I don't know if I've heard about your future plans. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm between UConn, Elon, and Union for schools I'm going to go to. Um, I just have to make a decision now. We went, my dad and I went down to Elon this past week to look at it, and it was gorgeous. So we were looking. Yeah, I'm just a couple, probably next week I'll probably make my decision because I'll kind of have to. <laughs> <laughs> Both my kids loved UConn. Ellie's still there. She loves it there yeah. for whatever that's worth. Yep, and that's where I went. They have everything you could possibly want. It's, that was the beauty of a large school like that. It's a great school. All right, Dr. Maffa. Just briefly, I had two Granby residents ask what the uh, the black tarps in the center were. I think it's because it's so removed from the, you know, knowing that there was going to be a redo of the intersection. And I think they were worried because they said target on them. Yeah. So I had to explain to them that it had to do with the improved traffic flow that's proposed for the center. But yeah, it's for the... They're falling down For the easier. sidewalks. Well, yeah. The yeah. black things, yeah. yeah. So that was, that was my excitement for there you go. That's pretty Target, exciting, Target, Tyvac, it's yeah. the same, you know, yeah. just a company. Just a company. Yeah, just a company. Yeah. I had to yeah. be clear that it was for the construction purposes, not a big target going in anywhere. Every time somebody asked me about the work in the center, I said, don't kid yourself, it's going to be miserable. It's going to take two years, it's going to be miserable. It is. And, and then I don't have to come back and redo it like they did the roundabout. And then I blame, I blame Cunley for the whole thing. So <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. No, I don't have anything. All right. Sally? No. Mark? Nothing for me, thanks. Okay. Do we have any need for an executive session? No. So before we adjourn, this is my friend Kelly Lawton. I told you she would be here. <coughs> Don't go anywhere. I'm going to swear you in as soon as we adjourn. All right. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. To move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good work, everybody. Thank you. Oops. Okay. We are adjourned. Okay.